Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is midweek service, Wednesday, and I just want to bring these greetings from our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Who are you to pass judgment? For none of us lives, and equally none of us dies for himself alone. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Lord, how often I to forgive my brother. Could I ever wait about this matter of forgiveness, Lord? I do try to be understanding and I'm truly ready to forgive and forget. But it takes a lot of time, Father. But some people are absolutely impossible. I mean, I'm only human. Surely there is to be a limit to what they expect of me. What's that you say? You never set any limit in my case. But that's different, Father. Compassionate, rescuing, forgiving God. Never let us take for granted your loving, saving activity. Never let us take for granted the fact that despite all the evil we will do, you still care for us. Father, we are here before you. You still reach out, forgive, and restore us. So deal with us, we pray, that we may have short memories for any wrongdoings done to us and long memories for the sins you have forgiven. Be with us, Father. In your name I pray. Amen. I will call Brother Ben to come and to do the reading of the Word of God from the book of Romans, chapter 14, verses 1 to 12. Good morning, and I hope your week's going well and uh, you're having a, an amazing Wednesday. Um, as Johnson mentioned, I'll be reading from Romans 14, verses 1 to 12, the weak and the strong. Accept the one whose faith is weak without quarrelling over disputable matters. One person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt, contempt the one who does not, and the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? They're to their own master, servant stands or fall. And they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another kid considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Whoever eats meat does so to the Lord, for they give thanks to God. And whoever abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us live for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason Christ died and returned to life, so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. You, then... Why do you judge your brother or sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will acknowledge God. So then each of us will get, give an account of ourselves to God. And this is the word of the Lord. So, uh, yeah, we'll get Johnson back to share his message for this week and... Have a wonderful week. Thank you, Ben, for the reading of the Word of God. Today I've come up with a theme. Where do you live? Where do you live? In the irreverent comet uh, Moth Python and the Holy Grail, which is sent up for of the King Arthur's tales, they the seen one of the nice Sebedeve is confronted by a group of villagers. It seems they've gripped one of the local women and claimed she is a witch. It's very obvious that her long crooked nose is fake. 
and has been tied on and she has been dressed up to look like a witch. Sebe so Dever questioned the evidence and the people confessed that they made it all up. But they still wanted to ban the woman as a witch. You know we may not judge people as witches anymore, but we do judge them by everything else under the sun. We judge people by their clothing, their jobs, their friends, the kind of car they drive, the music they listen to, their lifestyle, their hairstyle, their family, and even where they live. We love jumping into conclusions, don't we? Sometimes that's all the exercise some of us get. That's what normal people do. But don't forget we are not the normal people. We are the abnormal people. We are given our lives to Christ. We have given our lives to Christ. And we are now being called by the name Christians, which means we live a Christ-like life. And through Christ, we are called to live by different standards. God calls us to love each other and treat each other the same, no matter what. We are not called to live in a judgment house where doors are locked and bolted, where there is no handle on the outside of the door, and you can only get in if somebody lets you in. We are called to live in grace and mess house, whose door is always open and welcoming committee is there to greet you. That's why I say, where do you live? And if they aren't the way you enter, it's not because you are not welcome. It's because they've gone out in search of others like you. We need a place to live. As we continue our look at Romans, let's see what Paul has to say and about judging others and where we should live. Which house? Paul in essence asks, where do you live? In which house do you live? The house of judgment or the house of mercy and grace? Which house do you live? It's, and it's a, most sub, it's a subject most of us don't want to hear. Paul Point Blank talks about standing in judgment of others. You can almost hear the disbelief and sadness and spiritual amazement in his voice as he writes. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of others? What is he saying? He's saying, I am a servant of God. You are a servant of God. Who am I to pass judgment on a servant of God? Because you don't belong to me. You are God's servant. Why would he write something like that? Well, you have to remember that the early church was made up of two distinct groups of people, the Jews and the Gentiles. The Jews were those who had been raised with strict dietary laws, especially concerning meat offered to idols. In Rome, most of the butcher shops were run by the pagan temples. You offered an animal sacrifice and the meat was then sold to the public in the butcher shop. So the man went into the temple of coffers. For practicing Jews, eating that meat was quirky. No, 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 no. no. It was turned around to worshiping the idol yourself by eating that meat. So they also lived by a strict and hard and fast rule that the Sabbath was the seventh day or Saturday. So the genders were raised without any knowledge of dietary laws, and most of them initially had no concept of what the Sabbath was all about. So when they came to Christ, but when they accepted Christ, they began worshipping together on the first day of the week, on, or on Sunday, the day which coincided with Christ's resurrection. And they celebrated the resurrection of Christ every week. Every Sunday was seen as a miniature Easter. So you had a group of well-meaning, knowledgeable people, old-timers who had a religious awakening, setting up the newcomers, the new baby Christians, who were still growing, not just in their faith, but in their knowledge of the faith, and why certain things were being done. So you can see these new people coming into the church, they did not even understand what they were required to do. What they know is that they've surrendered their lives to Christ. That is the only thing they know. But the old timers weren't being mean-spirited. They simply thought they were right. That's the way they always have done it in the past. So this controversy over eating meat from idols, which day was the Sabbath, was getting out of hand. 
So Paul writes this portion of the letter to address that issue. What difference does it make to us today? Well, not much, at least in answer to the question of meat sacrifice idols. I can't remember the time when I went back in temple to buy steak. I can't even remember the time I remember eating meat which was sacrificed to an idol. And I said, it's nothing. This is an animal which was created in the image of God, by God. God created all animals. And God said, yes, you can eat them. So the Sabbath question has pretty much been answered over the assembly by practice. But also due to what Paul writes here, Paul was clear, it's not about the day or the food. It's about honoring God. That is what is very important. Verse 5, some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in the same, in their own minds. Verse 6, those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord. Since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God as well. So Paul tells us basically, quit fighting about the inconsequential. It's all about honoring God. It's nothing, it's nothing. All accountable. Unfortunately, we still pass judgment on others all the time, even in the church. I just read about a pastor who was confronted by a man after church one day. Preacher, the man said, I have two complaints about you. First, when I was the chairman of the trustees, you tried to tell me how to do the job. You should just let the church leaders do their job the way they want. And the pastor went to say, what is the second complaint? Asking the pastor. Well, said the man, I don't like the hymns that the choir director speak. I wish you would tell her to pick more of the old ones. Obviously, the man was not aware of the mixed message. He wanted the pastor to refrain from telling leaders, people, how to do their jobs. But he wanted the pastor to tell the choir director which song to sing. People are amazing when it comes to these things. Paul says, we should be careful about how we judge one another because each of us will be accountable to God. We will all stand before the judgment seat of God. But while the church must be uncompromising in its stand against activities that are expressing forbidden by scripture, things like adultery, homosexuality, murder, theft, it should not create additional rules and regulations given equal status with the Bible or with God's law. So many times Christians base their moral judgments on opinion, personal dislikes, or, or, or cultural bias rather than the word of God. So when we pass judgment, it should be what the Bible is saying. It's not about our opinions, what we think. So when they do these things, show that their own faith is weak and they do not think beyond the word of God, that God is powerful enough to guide his children. So we find people passing those judgments, but we are saying we only pass judgments that are in the Bible. When someone commits adultery, that's when we confront the person. When someone does something, he has, uh, he has stolen. Or if someone has committed murder, then we confront the person. Paul re reiterates what Jesus said and reminds us of one of the basic tenets of our faith. Judge not, lest you be judged. And that's not just a catchy phrase to put on a t-shirt or make a bumper stick out of it. It's supposed to be a way of life and a mark of who we are. It's supposed to be one of the signs that we are abnormal. Judge not so that we will not be judged. Well, once one, we accepted Christ, we are active, we are evicted and moved out of judgment house. And we are challenged to move into grace and mercy house. Because living in grace and mercy house proves we live to God and not to ourselves. We no longer live by ourselves. It's only grace and mercy house that we can live to, the, to God. You see, it's only through the grace and mercy of God that we were able to live judgment house. 
We have been evicted from Judgment House because of blessed mercy. But we can't do it on our own. We have been set free by Christ. So the task of standing accountable and blameless before God is impossible. There is no way we can be perfect and not sin in a fallen world. We can give it our best shot, but we will always come up short and alone. But the good news is that we don't have to do it alone. Christ Jesus stepped into the scene and said, I will take his burden of sin. I will take a burden of sin. When they triumph, we all triumph. Or as the Apostle Paul writes it, we do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. And that is very important for us to know. Verse 8, we live. We live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. We need Christ. But the second thing that we need is each other too. Not only can we bring about our salvation, but we can leave grace and mess house alone. One of the keys for living in grace and mess house is to constantly show grace and mercy. We need to show grace and mercy to everyone. That's how we live to the Lord, as Paul says. A certain pastor was visiting one of his parishioners. As they were talking, the conversation began. The lad of the house, wanting to pick up the conversation, pointed out their window to a neighbor's backyard where the wash was hanging on the line. And she said, see that lad next door? The wash, she hangs out. See how dirty it is. She never hangs out clean wash. So the pastor felt somewhat uncomfortable and tried to change the subject and quickly drew the visitor close. As he was departing from the house, the lad of the house walked out on the front porch with him. And again, the wash next door was clearly visible to both of them and it was nearer to them now. They both realized at the same time that this wash was sparkling white, just as white as any wash could ever be. So the truth began to dawn to them that it wasn't the neighbor's wash which was dirty. Rather, it was the window through which they had viewed the wash. How clean are your windows? Where do you live? Which house do you live? Judgment house or a grace and mercy house? You and I have been challenged to divert from the world, to be abnormal people, people who are beyond judgment, people who would not judge other people. We have received a prescription for holiness and we put it on Christ. And now we are called and challenged to live to the Lord. But we can't do it by ourselves and we sure can't do it in judgment house. We can only do it in grace and mercy house. That is where we are called to be. How clean are your windows before you make a judgmental statement? Before you call people to support your views? How clean are your windows? Where do you live? Unfortunately, it was this lady's windows which were dirty, not the wash from a neighbor. And sometimes we point fingers at others forgetting that we ourselves are the ones who need cleaning. May the good Lord help us so that we don't judge other people because the way they appear, the way they look. I've seen small videos on YouTube about people judging others because of the way they look. Because maybe someone looks, he appears to be a homeless person. And maybe because they think, because they're a homeless person, it means you have been under drugs or you have been doing other things. But it's not like that. Some people are homeless because of situations they've encountered in their lives. So we don't need to judge people. We need to find out from people about their situation before we bring conclusions. May the good Lord help us so that we don't pass judgment on people before we understand their predicament. God help us. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Let us pray. Forgiving God. More willing to forgive than often we all confess. Help us to see our failures. To see where we fell short. To see where we deceive ourselves. Where we close our eyes and ears. To the ripples of our own doing. Father, help us. Help us, Father. Help us, God. So that we understand who we are. So that we are able, Lord Jesus, to forgive others. And not to judge them, but to understand who God is in their lives. Lord Jesus, you constantly offer forgiveness to each of us. Abundant forgiveness. Losing count because you are more willing to forgive than we are to ask for forgiveness. But sometimes forgiveness is hard to receive because of our pride. Help me, God. Help us, God, to forgive. Help us, God, because we have passed judge, judgment harshly when we sought kindness. We have condemned quickly. When we are required patience. We have hated easily. When we needed love. Help us Lord. Forgive us. As we hope to forgive others. In your name I pray. Amen. Let us receive grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all, from now and evermore. Amen.